So let's talk about the fearful avoidant attachment style, five biggest fears in romantic relationships. Well, in this video, we'll cover those five major fears. We'll talk about where they come from. And at the end of this video, we'll talk a little bit about what you can do to start actually letting go of these fears. Because what you'll see, and we'll do a little exercise together towards the end, is that these fears can actually be impacting you way more than you realize. So first and foremost, all of these fears essentially come from your subconscious programming about how relationships were, which often has its biggest roots, surprise, surprise, in childhood. So in our first zero to two years, we are actually, sorry, zero to three years, we're actually the most suggestible, right? In other words, our subconscious mind is in this state of sort of hyper suggestibility. And when we talk about the idea of suggestibility, it comes from, um, you know, concepts and frameworks used within hypnosis. And what this means is that we are basically almost in a light state of hypnosis um, from the zero, the age of zero to three, but then really from the ages of, of three to eight, that actually continues outward. And it's because our brains are producing much more alpha, many more alpha and theta brain waves. And this makes us, you know, much more in this suggestible state. And so essentially what happens is we're sponging all this information in during that time period about what love is, what relationships are, what boundaries are, what communication looks like. And we're getting all this modeling essentially from our firsthand experiences. So how we were loved, how we were parented, what we see repetitively or what was modeled to us, right? So what you saw in your parents' dynamics between one another, and then also from anything that we are hearing over and over again, that essentially can be their own form of modeling or can just be different limiting beliefs we acquire, right? Like if you, for example, are a child, you go to school and you hear from another child all the time, like everybody always fights, relationships are always bad, then constantly hearing that messaging can also have an impact on your subconscious mind and, and your belief system about the world. Um, or about relationships in particular. So essentially what we'll see is a lot of really powerful dynamics come out of this because if you're a fearful avoidant, you tend to have specific wounds because of the way that you were exposed to different experiences in your upbringing. So one of the first biggest wounds is a betrayal core wound. And it's funny because betrayal doesn't have to be this like outright betrayal, right? It doesn't have to be that somebody directly betrays you, although that can absolutely be a context or reason for why this exists. But betrayal can just be this lack of trust. Like think of the betrayal wound as being this trust wound. Trust can be broken in childhood on, on this, you know, sort of like fragmented basis, like your internal trust baseline, your foundation of trust can really be broken because of situations where, for example, what you see and what's, what actually happens do not line up. So there's a lot of like incongruency. An example of this could be that you constantly, let's say your parents are split up and you constantly have one parent saying, I'm going to come visit you. I'm going to see you soon. And they constantly don't show up, right? That can cause a huge betrayal wound. It can also be because you're constantly having to walk on eggshells and your environment's not really safe or supportive for you. And so you feel all the time, like you can't really trust what's going to happen or what's going to take place in your environment. And so that can create betrayal core wounds. There can be an excess of lying. Often one really powerful thing that creates trust wounds is um, parental alienation. So if you'll have one parent pitting the child against the other or vice versa, you sort of learn, okay, I can't really trust either parent what's going on that can create their own betrayal wounds. Parentification, like if you can't trust your, your parent to take care of themselves, if you are supporting them because maybe they're struggling with substances or addiction, alcoholism, um, if you're emotionally parentified because you're constantly helping one or both of the parents with their different emotional challenges, like all these different things can cause you to not really trust the parent to take care of themselves, take care of you, or for you to actually be able to really trust in your environment that you're in. So this gets brought in because of the way it's conditioned into the subconscious mind into, of course, um, this person's adult romantic relationships, because the subconscious mind stores everything. It consolidates information over time, but it really stores everything. And when things have an emotional impact, they're actually more likely to go from short-term memory and really convert into long-term memory and really um, have an impact on the way you feel in your adult life. And so basically the way memory is encoded is the more emotion is in there, um, the more likely we are to really be impacted by these types of dynamics. And so this betrayal core wound can cause you to actually have totally different experiences as an adult, but have the experience of feeling like, oh, people are going to, um, you know, you can't trust people to stick around. They're going to be bored of you or they're going to lie to you or they're going to cheat or they're going to, you know, betray you in a whole bunch of different potential forms that your subconscious mind may be concerned about. Because if that was a subconscious comfort zone in, chi in childhood and something you saw all the time, 
But of course, our subconscious mind essentially is this like lens that we see and, and interact with the world through. So we project these things back out onto our world as adults. Big fear number two is actually abandonment. Um, abandonment is not always real abandonment wounding in childhood. And what I mean by that is that we cannot actually be physically abandoned, but abandon can still be deeply conditioned into the subconscious mind in a way that has a really real effect. So when you look at fearful avoidance, right? Like let's say one common example that you would see in a typical fearful avoidant dynamic, and this is not everybody's example, but this would be like a, a very common one, is let's say that you have a fearful avoidant who has a parent who's an alcoholic. And so when they come home from school, you know, sometimes the parents passed out. And let's say they're they're six or seven years old, come they walk home from school, they see their parent passed out, and they're not sure if their parent's alive, right? there may not be this physical abandonment where the parent actually leaves or actually passes away, but the emotional impact and the magnitude of even being scared about that as a child. And then especially if there's an element of repetition, um, this can create these huge abandonment wounds for somebody. And other variations of this can be, you know, and these are very common, unfortunately, experiences that some fearful avoidance will have is parents threatening to commit suicide, um, parents threatening to leave the child, you know, just these very like unstable, um, chaotic kinds of dynamics that will cause a child to feel very like scared, afraid, consumed with like, what if this abandonment happens? And so this is another big dynamic that you'll see um, for fearful avoidance as adults is they can be very, very afraid of losing somebody, of being abandoned. And sometimes, you know, as a fearful avoidant, you're going to see a very different relationship to abandonment than you would see with an anxious preoccupied, for example, because as a fearful avoidant, the abandonment wound could cause you to activate and want to get closer and be afraid of losing somebody and try to maintain more proximity to that person in the relationship. But also the abandonment wound can cause you to need to move in the other direction. I'm scared that this person could abandon me and hurt me. I don't want to feel um, this afraid. And so I need to push this person away and keep them at arm's length. And I need to essentially deactivate and create space because I don't like the, the way this wound is making me feel. So fearful avoidance can sometimes activate or deactivate depending on the wound. And it's not necessarily one or the other. It can be based on the day, based on the, the type of way the wound is, is triggered as an adult that can cause them these different behavioral coping mechanisms. Whereas generally what you would see with an anxious person is that they are going to constantly try to seek more closeness, right? They won't really deactivate when their abandonment wound is triggered. Number three, fear of vulnerability. <laughs> so um, this is the big one. And this is something that comes up all the time in relationships. And I want to talk about this one for a second. Um, you know, being afraid of being vulnerable is a real thing. And maybe this can be because you got shamed for being vulnerable as a child. Maybe when you were vulnerable, nothing positive happened as a child for the vast majority of times. Like maybe when you were vulnerable, you got, you know, criticized for it or shamed or put down, or maybe you just didn't get your needs met. So you had to kind of like grow up fast and buckle down. And there was no room or space for you to be vulnerable because you couldn't really rely on your caregivers when you were vulnerable. Like all of these can be different variations of why this might take place. But this fear of vulnerability can be so real that it causes you to really not let people in. And I want to talk about this because this is the really important impact of this wound. When you're terrified of being vulnerable, you keep yourself isolated because what you'll see is that vulnerability, it, us actually showing our inner self, our inner world, our truth, who we genuinely are, fears, flaws, everything included, that's what allows somebody to actually experience more unconditional love. You are keeping your ability to receive love in a conditional space when you're not letting people in because you're only showing yourself with conditions, meaning you can only be loved with conditions. When you instead let people in, share your fears, share your flaws, share your insecurities, and people love you anyways, we start to feel more unconditional love. And unfortunately, this dynamic, this big fear around showing our vulnerability is something that can cause a fearful avoidant to really feel isolated and lonely and sometimes unloved for who they truly are because they're not even giving themselves that opportunity. Um, so it's really important to, to work on reprogramming these fears. So I'm going to share the two other fears and I'll, I'll take you through a little exercise at the end. But I also just want to say, um, if you want to reprogram these fears in like a very short period of time, really get these out of the way, you can check out the Emotional Mastery and Belief Reprogramming course. It is my favorite course in PDS. You can check it out for free for seven days. I'll put the link below. It's more than enough time to get through that course. 
and it will help you go through the entire course um, and understand how your subconscious works in great detail. And there's a few different reprogramming tools. So you can see which one is your favorite to actually reprogram some of these old fears and set them to rest once and for all. Because you'll see when we talk about this tool here that these fears cost us so much. They really affect us in all these different ways. Um, so the next fear, number four, is this fear of not being worthy. Unfortunately, growing up as a fearful avoidant, you often have to be exposed to conditions where you're earning your worth. Now, it doesn't mean that you're actually like earning love. You know, you may have parents who really love you unconditionally, but they don't know how to express it at all in a healthy way because maybe they're both under the influence of substances. Or maybe they are really struggling with their own demons in a variety of different potential ways or avenues. But if you take care of them or if you do what they say, that's when you get love. And this may cause you to feel like, okay, I only get love for what I do rather than just receiving love for who I am. And one of the really interesting principles, I talk about this all the time and here and in, inside the school everywhere. One of the most interesting principles of conscious parenting is the idea or concept of giving your child love for no reason. Because what essentially this conditions a child, like let's say the child's coloring in the corner or watching television or, you know, just doing something. If a parent comes up and just loves the child for no reason, the child is making associations that they are worthy of receiving love just because they exist, right? Whereas a lot of people, you know, fearful avoidance, especially sometimes, but this can be really any attachment style, grow up in an environment where they get love for the grade that they got or for the accomplishment that they had. And so this can cause a child to sort of feel this fragmentation of like, oh, I'm not left for who I am. I'm left for what I do. And again, we bring these subconscious things into our relationships. Your subconscious is like the lens you see the world through. And so if it's colored by these different painful past experiences, we bring those things as, as essentially our baggage, right? Into our adult romantic relationships. And this can cause you to feel like you're constantly having to be on your best behavior, wearing a mask, showing up in specific ways to like earn love from your partner. And this can, again, keep you guarded in a sense, right? And not really letting people in and not really allowing yourself to receive love in healthy ways, um, which is a big important part of the fearful avoidance healing journey is to learn to receive love or receive support, right? And last but not least, being helpless or trapped in the wrong situation. Fearful avoidance often grow up feeling a little trapped in their home, a little helpless in their home, sometimes because they have experiences or circumstances that are, that are a little too much for them to handle. And so they can feel like, oh my gosh, you know, feeling like things are beyond them and feeling afraid and kind of stuck there and not knowing what to do. And so these will be big fears that get projected into future relationships. And sometimes they can be fears of ending up with the wrong person and being trapped there, right? Fears that can come in around marriage or, you know, big commitment. And again, a lot of these things really have roots in childhood. So I want to ask you a question. Um, if you want to pause this video and do this, highly recommend, but write out for a second, what do these fears cost you? Okay. Try to write out like a whole bunch of different things that these fears cost you and just take a look at them. So whether it's the betrayal wound or the fear of abandonment or the fear of being vulnerable and letting people in or the worthiness wound or the helpless and trapped fears. You know, what do these things cost you? Not just in your romantic relationships, but in many areas of your life. And if you can come up with like 10 or 12 things, this is very empowering, right? And then I want you to ask yourself, what would the benefits be of letting these things go, of actually working through these things, setting them to rest? And this is where life can transform because I was somebody who had all of these wounds personally, big time, um, all of them <laughs> very strongly. And life is different on the other side of this. And it takes work to get there, but this is something we can do, right? We can shed these things. And by giving yourself the opportunity to actually do that work, to actually let yourself move through these things, it changes everything. I mean, it changes the way you feel about yourself. It changes your sense of inner peace. It changes your ability to really let people in and to be loved and to receive love as much as you're trying to pour into other people. So there feels like there's this actual exchange. It allows you to have better boundaries when you're not trying to earn your worth all the time. I mean, there's so many powerful things to come out of it. And I'm not telling you this because I'm like, Hey, go take the emotional mastery course. You can take that course. If you cancel before day seven, you'll never get charged anything. You can literally go and take the whole thing for free. I'm telling you this because I want you to do this. If you're fearful avoidant and this has been keeping you stuck, or if you're feeling this way in your life, like 
I want you to know a little bit of simple reprogramming can actually completely move the needle for you and really help you be on a whole new path for life going forward. And, you know, all these things that happened to you in childhood, they're not your fault, right? Like they're not your fault that you didn't raise your hand and volunteer and ask for these wounds or these experiences, but they are only really your responsibility. And so as much as it's not your fault that you got there, really only you can take that responsibility to change these things. So, you know, you can take the course and go inside the school. You can check out other reprogramming um, uh, videos we have on this channel. You can seek out, you know, counseling or therapy one-to-one, um, whichever way you want to go there. Give yourself the opportunity to change these things um, because that's where you're going to see that you can really move into a whole new space and your inner world can be much more at peace. So anyways, thanks for listening to my little philosophical spiel there. Um, that felt like it needed to come out of my heart. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. If you have questions about this down below, please let me know. If you're enjoying this channel, please consider liking, subscribing, um, sharing, or hitting the, th the thumbs up button. I guess that's the like button, but same thing. Um, I really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm a lot. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see you in future videos.